Until now, everyone thought China's passenger jets were decades behind Boeing and Airbus. They were built with Western parts, powered by Western engines, and dismissed as copycats. But that changed when China rolled out something that stunned the entire aviation world. A homegrown jet engine called the CJ-2000. For the first time, China isn't just assembling planes. It's building the beating heart that could end its dependence on the West. So what makes this engine so dangerous to Boeing and Airbus? This story begins with a decades-long dream. China wants to fly under its own power. No imported engines, no foreign approvals. If it succeeds, it won't just change aviation. It could shift who controls the global sky. And that's where Comic, the Commercial Aircraft Corporation of China, steps in. Its latest creation, the wide-body C929, needs an engine powerful enough to rival the giants. The CJ-2000 might be that breakthrough. For years, Comic has chased Western manufacturers, trying to close a gap that took others half a century to build. Its first big leap was the C919, a narrow-body jet designed to compete with the Boeing 737 and the Airbus A320. It matched their size, range, and capacity. Yet deep inside, it still relied on a Western core. The Leap 1C engine from CFM International, a joint venture between GE Aerospace and Safran. That single fact meant China never had full control over its own aircraft. Even when the C919 entered commercial service and made its first international flight to Hong Kong, the achievement came with an asterisk. It lacked certification from the FAA and EASA, blocking entry into global markets. But instead of retreating, Comic aimed higher. The next step was the C929, a long-haul wide-body jet meant to go head-to-head -head with Boeing's 787 Dreamliner and Airbus's A350. At first, it was a joint project with Russia, known as the CR929. Then sanctions hit, partnerships collapsed, and China took full control. That is when a new realization set in. Without its own engine, even the C929 would stay grounded by Western dependence. And that is where the revolution began, when China decided to build its own engine from scratch. A move that could rewrite the balance of power in the skies. For Comic, the dream of a fully independent jet always hit the same wall. The engine. Everything else could be manufactured in China, but the core technology that made flight possible came from abroad. From the avionics to the landing gear, and especially the power plant, Western companies held control. The Leap 1C engine that powered the C919 came from CFM International, a partnership between General Electric and Safran. Without it, the aircraft could not fly. That dependence was not only a technical problem, it was a political one. If relations between nations toned cold, parts could be delayed or licenses revoked. No country can call itself independent in the skies when another controls the engines under its wings. This became painfully clear after the war in Ukraine began. Russia, once China's partner in the CR929 project, was suddenly cut off from Western suppliers. Komuk was left to carry on alone. That moment became a turning point. If China wanted to finish the C929, it had to create the engine itself. On November 20, 2023, at the Shanghai International Commercial A Show, China made a bold statement. AECC, the Aero Engine Corporation of China, revealed a full-scale model of the CJ-2000. For the first time, the world saw the engine that would power the future of Chinese aviation. AECC is not a small startup. It is a state-owned aerospace giant built to do one thing design and produce the country's most advanced engines. The CJ-2000 is their flagship project, created to propel the C929 and to free China from foreign reliance once and for all. At first glance, it looked like another large turbofan. But what made engineers around the world stop and take notice was the performance. The CJ-2000 is a high bypass ratio engine that can deliver between 78,000 and 84,000 pounds of thrust. Its turbine inlet temperature can reach about 2,200 Kelvin, which is roughly 225 degrees higher than the Rolls-Royce Trent XWB-97. That figure alone signals how far China has come. The engine uses composite fan blades, advanced cooling systems, and optimized aerodynamics to achieve higher thrust with lower fuel burn. By 2023, it had already entered testing. The first flight test was scheduled for 2024. This timeline shocked analysts who expected such progress to take many more years. With these numbers, the CJ-2000 stands shoulder to shoulder with the best Western engines. It rivals the GE Giangs and the Rolls-Royce Trent 1000, both of which power long-haul aircraft today. If AECC's claims hold true, this engine could mark a major shift in the global balance of power in aviation.
Jet engines are among the most complex machines ever built. Each one contains thousands of precision parts that must perform perfectly under extreme pressure and heat. The slightest flaw can lead to disaster. That is why only a handful of nations have mastered them. For decades, the United States and the United Kingdom dominated this field through companies like General Electric and Rolls-Royce. China's entry into this elite circle signals more than technical progress. It represents national pride and strategic independence. But making a prototype is not enough. Building engines that can power hundreds of commercial aircraft safely for decades is an entirely different challenge. Every new model must survive thousands of hours of endurance tests, certification audits, and maintenance checks before it earns global trust. And certification is where politics often enters the picture. To compete globally, Comac needs recognition from international regulators such as the FAA in the United States and EASA in Europe. Without it, its aircraft cannot operate freely on most international routes. Still, even Western analysts admit that China's rapid progress is remarkable. Just 10 years ago, the country had no independent large engine program. Now, it is producing a power plant that rivals the most advanced Western designs. That leap is what truly alarmed Boeing and Airbus. They now face a competitor that is not only closing the gap but could one day surpass them in their own field. China's plan has never been about winning overnight. It is about building step by step until it controls every link of the supply chain. The CJ-2000 is one of those links, but the broader plan stretches far beyond a single model. The government is investing billions into new airports, pilot training, and aviation infrastructure. It is also expanding partnerships across countries aligned with the Belt and Road Initiative. That includes building maintenance hubs and supply networks to support future exports of Chinese aircraft. At the same time, Comic is working to strengthen its reputation through domestic carriers. Most current orders for the C919 and future C929 come from state-owned airlines, but that is part of a long game. Each flight within China builds data, experience, and trust. Once reliability is proven at home, the next step is to offer these aircraft to friendly nations looking for alternatives to Boeing and Airbus. In 2024, Malaysia began exploring the possibility of purchasing Comic aircraft. If confirmed, it would mark the first international order outside of China's domestic network. Such deals would give Comic the proof it needs to show that its jets are ready for the global stage. The CJ-2000 is central to that effort. It symbolizes the country's intent to become self-reliant in one of the most demanding industries in the world. This is not just a technological project. It is a political statement. China wants the world to know it can design, build, and fly its own aircraft with engines made entirely on home soil. The message is clay. The next time a Boeing or Airbus jet crosses the Pacific, it may not be the only symbol of power in the sky. But there is still one question left unanswered. Can the CJ-2000 truly prove itself where it matters most, in real-world performance and global certification? That is the challenge that will decide whether this engine becomes China's greatest triumph or its most expensive gamble. The CJ-2000 exists. The prototype runs. The tests are underway. But the true battle for Comic and AECC has only just begun. Building an engine that performs in a lab is one thing. Building one that can run flawlessly for tens of thousands of flight hours across heat, ice, and turbulence is another. This is the stage where almost every newcomer struggles. Rolls-Royce, General Electric, and Pratt & Whitney have spent decades perfecting materials, combustion systems, and control software. Their engines are certified across continents and trusted by every major airline. For China, reaching that level means mastering not only technology but reliability. It must show the world that its engines can match the efficiency, lifespan, and safety of its Western rivals. Each test cycle must prove that the CJ-2000 can run with no vibration, no temperature spikes, no maintenance surprises. And every test is watched closely by engineers across the globe. So far, Reports from AECC suggest the CJ-2000 is performing as planned. The company expects to reach flight readiness within the next two years, with full certification by the early 2030s. If that happens, it would mark one of the fastest large engine developments in history. But that success is not guaranteed. Global certification is notoriously slow, and politics contain every approval into a negotiation. Even if the engine meets every technical standard, Acceptance from the FAA or EASA may depend on more than performance alone. Still, 
The shift in tone around the industry is clear. A decade ago, few took comics seriously. Today, Boeing and Airbus are watching carefully. The CJ2000 shows that China no longer intends to follow. It intends to compete. The strategy is simple but effective. Prove reliability at home first. Equip domestic fleets, gather millions of safe flight hours, and then expand to partner nations. By the time Western regulators make their decision, China could already have dozens of jets flying across Asia, Africa, and the Middle East. The goal is not instant domination. It is steady progress. Each flight builds credibility. Each delivery adds leverage. If Comet can sustain that momentum, the global aviation map may begin to look very different. For Boeing and Airbus, who have shared the market for decades, a third force would break their duopoly. For China, it would be more than a business victory. It would be proof that technological independence is within reach. The CJ2000 is still climbing through its test phase, but its impact is already being felt. Every milestone brings China closer to flying wide-body jets powered entirely by engines made on its own soil. If the upcoming flight test can fame AECC's bold claims, the world's next generation of long-haul aircraft might not come from Seattle or Toulouse. It might come from Shanghai. And when that day arrives, the sky will no longer belong to just two names. It will belong to whoever dares to build the future from the ground up.